Hello and welcome back to CodeBlaze. So last time in our series to create color switch in Godot, we implemented uh, pickables like the star and the color switch. And we basically have most of the gameplay logic done. Today, uh, we'll be starting to make the game infinite. So currently we are just limited to the three traps that we have manually placed. And that's certainly not fun. We want traps to be infinitely be created in front of the player so the player can try to achieve his highest score so let's get started now the simplest way to achieve the functionality we want would be basically instantiating new traps so our trap is a scene so basically creating new scenes in front of the player and destroying scenes behind of the player to basically clean up so that our memory stays in limits now this approach will very very well work in our game because the scope is limited and you'll hardly see any performance downside but uh, instantiating and destroying scenes does have a performance cost so a smarter way would be to basically recycle the already created uh, traps so rather than destroying and creating a new one we can just take this trap once it's out of the screen and move it ahead so changing the position or transform of a scene is very cheap and ideally this is what needs to be done and this pattern is pretty prevalent in game development and it's called object pooling so you'll find it at a lot of places and it's a bit of an advanced thing for a beginner but uh, it's something that will help you a lot in terms of thinking about optimization so that's why i want to implement this functionality using object pooling so another great example of this would be uh, bullets in a first person game. So rather than creating new bullets on each fire, because like we have some rapid fire weapons and the fire rate is pretty high. So rather than doing that, we can have a pool of bullets created before. And as and when the player presses the fire button, we just move the bullet to the nozzle position. So that's what object pooling is. We basically instantiate a bunch of objects before the scene or before the game starts and keep reusing them by claiming and reclaiming them so let's implement our object pool or our entity manager now so in my source folder i'll create a new script called trap manager let's go to new script and we'll call it trap manager and let it open in vs code source App manager. Yeah, I have my the implementation here. So this trap manager will basically be responsible for um claiming and reclaiming traps. So it will be observing the player's movement and upon that it will create and reclaim traps. Uh before we can do that, we need to make this a bit more configurable. So let's start by exporting an array of packed scenes uh, okay we haven't created the trap class yet but that's what we'll be doing soon uh let it this be here so what this traps packed scene array would uh, represent is basically you can have multiple traps right now we just have the circle but if you have some three, four other traps, we can basically add it to this array and they will be instantiated by the trap manager. Okay, next we export an int. This will be the trap instance count. So for each element in that above array, how many instances of that element we want in our, tra uh, in our object pool. Okay, so let's do that. Trap instance count. For now, we can set it to four. Um, really, this is something you can configure depending upon your trap size. But, but four is fine for now. So next, we'll export an int. And this will represent the active trap counts. So the active count is basically how many traps can be there in the scene at an, any given time. This will be the active count. And it doesn't, and this won't represent uh, any single trap. So any type of trap, what should be the total count that should be present on the screen? So we can again set this to four. And finally, 
what we want is a separation so we'll call it tab separation and let's set it to 2000 so this is the distance between uh, all your adjacent traps so we'll use the distance to decide what would be the new position for the upcoming claim trap so with these variables we'll be able to configure our trap manager and it's pretty extendable so we can create as many traps as we want just add it to this array and our manager will take care of it so before going ahead let's create our trap class and i'll join you there so as you can see we have some errors here that's basically uh, because the trap class isn't defined so we'll go to our source and create a new script let's just call it trap Okay, this will extend from node 2D. I think it took that only. And let's open trap, it extends node. We will change it to node 2D. Okay, and then we'll give it a class name so that we can use it in different places. Call it trap. And we just need one method here to reactivate our pickables. And that is because once we touch once the player touches those pickables they become inactive and once we reclaim the trap we want it again to activate the pickables so that our stars and our color switches visible again so to do that we'll get a reference to both of them uh, but before that let's add it to the trap scene so to this root thing only we'll add the trap script let's just drag it here again go back to our editor so we'll create on ready var on ready var this will be the star this will equal to dollar star okay and i think did we name it something else not star only and we'll create another on ready var this will be a switch will be equal to set named switch okay so dollar right and we'll create the activate pickables function now Punk activate and this will return a void so all this is going to do is call the set active method on both of them so let's call star dot call you can directly call it if you have the types assigned but uh not we haven't created class names for star and switch so you'll have to call it indirectly so let's say set active and we'll set it to true duplicate this and put the switch here so anytime we claim we'll be calling this method so now if we go back to our trap manager this should stop complaining and uh, we need to restart the editor but let's just go ahead okay uh, i don't know why vs code is complaining maybe the restart will fix it but uh, next we'll be defining our actual array that will hold the traps or basically our object pool Okay, the error was this won't be named trap here because this is actually an array. Uh, pretty stupid of me. But anyway, let's get started with our trap pool. So that would be a trap pool. And for now, this will just be an empty array. On start of the game, we'll be initializing this. And another private variable that we'll need is the last trap position. So this will basically represent the world position on which the last trap was claimed so let's just call it last trap position and initially we'll set it to 1000 on y so our traps will start spawning 1000 units above the player so vector to 0 comma 1000 okay so we need to create three functions here one to initialize the object pool then one utility function to claim and one to reclaim so let's start with initialization of the object pool. So we'll call it func create pool. Again, this will return a void. 
So what we'll do here is iterate over our traps array, the pack array scene, and then iterate from one to instance count for each of those traps and basically push back a new instance to the trap pool. To do that, we'll just say for trap in uh, traps. For trap in traps, we'll go from for i in in trap instance count. Okay, now for each instance, we'll be creating a new object in our trap pool. So we'll say trap pool dot push back and we'll call it trap dot instance. So, uh, by default, these are packed scenes, and packed scenes are, I think, I'm not sure what they really are, but I think they are not an actual scene. That's why you'll need to instantiate them. They are more of a serializable format, from what I can guess. But ideally, you'll be getting the references to scenes using the packed scene, and whenever you want to instantiate them, you can call the instance method. Okay, so in our ready function, func ready we'll just create our pool so basically whenever the game starts our object pool or the trap pool will be initialized cool uh, next we need to create the claim and reclaim functions let's just do that so let's do a func mm -hmm. trap claim And this will return a void uh, because it will directly add the trap to the scene here only. So what we can do is var trap of type trap, and this will be equal to underscore trap pool dot pop back. The pop back will give us the instance right from the back of the pool. So you can consider this pool like a queue and it's a first in first out queue. So we'll be when we reclaim, we'll be pushing at the end of the queue and using pop back, we'll be claiming from the front of the queue. So with this, we have our uh, trap here. Next, we need to decide its position. So to do that, we'll use the last trap position and increment this by uh, the separation and it's in the up direction so we'll take vector 2 dot up into tab separation okay uh, i think uh, yeah so now that we have a last trap position uh, updated last trap position we can set it to the current strap position so we'll take position this will be equal to last trap position okay now our trap is in the correct place but it's not part of our scene so because we haven't anyway defined it to add it to our scene right so it won't be visible so to add any scene to a current scene we just need to call the add child method so add child trap so with this uh, the trap would be visible in our scene so next, uh, I'll have some utility for logging. Uh, you can just, if you want, these two print statements are not required, but this will just give us nice logs and tell us whatever is getting added and what would be the name and its position. Why is this complaining? It's okay. Finally, uh, we need to reactivate the pickables. So we'll just call trap or activate pickables. This is the utility method we defined in the trap class so that our pickables like star and color switch become active again. So with this, we have the claiming logic done. Next, we'll define the reclaim. So func trap reclaim. And reclaim will receive the trap that needs to be reclaimed. So we'll say trap and this will be a trap. Again, this will return a void. Reclaiming is pretty simple. All we just need to do is remove the current trap from the scene 
and add it to the pool again i have some utility here uh some logs here basically to print the position so that we know what our object pool is doing so to remove the trap from the scene we just need to call remove child and we'll do trap and we'll add it to our trap pool again trap pool dot push front and we'll pass in the trap so with this we have our object pool defined and we just need to change the ready method also because once the pool is created we initially need to claim a few traps so uh, that is equal to the active count otherwise the game would be empty so we'll do a for i in active count and we'll basically call deferred and the claim and reclaim need to be called in a deferred mode because they'll be uh, in changing the scene right so anytime you're interacting with the scene it's better to call it in deferred mode uh, it usually avoids some issues right so that's why we can just call this in a deferred mode we'll call it trap claim so what will happen now is once the game starts our trap pool will be created and then we'll again claim uh, enough traps so that our active count stays the same so let's get let's add this first and see that our initial initialization is uh, happening correctly wow initial initialization that's few redundant words right so we'll create a new node 2d here we'll call it the trap manager to this we'll add the trap manager script right and we can delete these three traps our scene is empty and all we need to do is put the trap here Ooh, let's go to our scene and we'll take this trap scene and put it here now if you have any more traps you can add it here and the pool will create them and you can actually call a method called trap pool dot shuffle after initialization right and create pool let's just do that so it won't make any difference right now but if you have different types of traps it will just randomize the pool okay so let's do that trap pool dot shuffle okay it will just randomize so that we are getting random uh, traps and we can again have some log printing here uh so on start we'll know what was actually final size that was initialized so let's play and see if this works okay i'll hit play and you see like our trap pool was created for size of four and we see four claiming statements starting from minus 1000 all the way to minus 7000 and if we play our game and go ahead i think there should be four traps that's two three and four and after this there won't be any more traps okay so yeah so we have our trap pool or the object pool ready all we need to do is now decide at what point the claim and reclaim need to be called and those will be connected by monitoring the player position and we'll set up few colliders on the player object so that reclaim would be triggered and whenever a reclaim is triggered that means we need to claim also so let's work on that so this is code blaze from the future so while editing this video i found that this was getting pretty big around 35 40 minutes so i'm splitting the video here right uh, at this moment uh, like i have completed everything but in the next episode we'll be connecting up our trap manager and seeing how to basically claim and reclaim at the right position by adding an area 2d right below our player so that we can get signal whenever our traps move out of the screen so yeah if you have any feedback leave them down below in the comments uh, if you have rating do leave a like it really helps me out share it with your friends and subscribe for the next part thank you